Hi, I'm Charlie Collins, and this is the Donegal Sport Hub Donegal Daily Championship Podcast. Brought to you in association with Kelly Centra, multi award winning store, mountain top letter Kenny, providing 24 hour service, seven days a week. And many thanks to Kelly's for their sponsorship. We really appreciate it. Just to remind you, of course, their weekend special, the steak meals, 11 euro, and uh, that's at their award winning diner and they're celebrating nine years in business and we really appreciate their support well we've had a championship weekend that uh, we won't forget for quite some time plenty to talk about plenty of excitement plenty of controversy plenty of drama and three perfect men to deal with all those situations John Harn, Alan Foley and Gary McDade are with me you're all welcome I might as well tell uh, everybody who tuned in that we've been here for about half an hour arguing about what happened and what was right and what was wrong. So we're going to argue about it now for the next half hour as well. I'm going to start just by saying we had seven championship games at the weekend. Seven. Uh, Three in the senior, two in the intermediate and two in the junior. Of those seven, three were decided by one point two of those in extra time, two of the others were decided by two points, and Kilcar had a five points victory over Guidor, which seems comfortable in the context of those other games, and Terman, and uh, well done to our former colleague here, uh, Francie Freel and his team, they retained senior championship football for next season with a six point victory over Milford in O'Donnell Park. That was the biggest win of the seven matches. I suppose, John, an indication of uh, how tight the championship is when you get to the latter stages that the matches become so tight. That's it, Cherry. You're talking about quality teams now, and they're all coming together. And we've spoken all year about the big four, so they were always going to be tight in the senior. And we've we've spoken the same about the intermediate championship. It's toss for coin between three or four teams, and you know they went the extra time. And uh, Clonmel only won by two points. Maybe we thought they might have a bit more to spare. We'll t- probably chat about that a bit later. But very tight, Cherry, and even you know. Uh, the uh, the junior games too, you know, went, to the, went to the wire. I think two yeah. points in injury time for the Gales to get over Cairndonna and just a point between Mavell and ours. So at this time of the year, Cherry, it's the good teams are coming to the top and they're going to be cracker of games and they're going to be tight and not much in it. So, you know, good yeah. quality stuff there. OK, we're going to start, Gary, with the with the junior stuff, as John says. Uh, Letter Kenny Gales went down to Cairndonna. I saw Gales down in Moville. You were there that day as well. They really struggled. Obviously, a bit of work has gone in because that was a tricky one for them going to Cairndonna, who'd finished second in the other group. A good victory for them. Two late points from Kieran Cannon and Ronan Freyne, I think, to get them over the line. But a big result for them. Absolutely massive, probably. It was like the last thing they wanted was a, a tough draw like out there, especially away from home down there like long old journeys well narrow down so it was um, and the, probably the big thing the difference in the Moville game Charlie they had Kieran Cannon back and they had Shade Hardy back and the two of them con- contributed handsomely to the scoreboard as well so they did and but both they showed a bit of dog and a bit of fight that they didn't show that day in Moville like it was non-existent that day in Moville yeah. because they, the game was in the melting pot so it was right at the end and and, and they showed that calibre and that wee bit of pedigree that you need in championship and listen they're, they're still only back at the semi-final like uh, they were in a final last year mm-hmm. and and by God, like they're going to have nothing easy now next weekend either. Like, and fair play for getting over that. It definitely will stand them, give them huge belief. But that junior championships a minefield as well. Like, so it is. You know, like you've the, the Gales and like the four teams left now. That I, I think there's nothing between the four. Yeah, Mavell bounced back from the defeat against Downings the previous week. They were impressive against the Gales. Went to Downings and lost. So they were under a wee bit of pressure yesterday, and a big derby against Oris and North and a shown derby. But came through by a point. Alan, they'll be happy enough because those derby matches they can go anyway oh, absolutely yeah like uh, they say form goes out the window and the form is quite even getting into that so uh, to get through that as you said that, um, they had started off the campaign uh, in good form as well so um, like they're right in the mix as well Charlie for it so uh, as I, I agree with Gary there I don't think there's actually anything between these four teams at all so yeah it's a bit like all the, the three championships are supposed to be like that when very much so four, yeah. well, well actually Danny Murphy and Seamus Haggerty back the last day or yesterday, mm. Charlie, and they weren't playing that day. We, were right, we mentioned right, them, and yeah. Danny started and did well. And Seamus came off the came off the bench, and kind of settled things. Uh, you know, saying he's in his forties, so he's his club secretary down there, and he kind of settled things from talking to people that are at the game. And and um, Kieran Dover actually didn't start. Who was very good that yeah, day, the county good. player. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when we were down against the Gales, he came on at half time. He's carrying a bit of a knock, but I think he really helped him settle le- in the game. And like Ora's got a goal in the fiftieth minute, and and the, and the game was level, so it was yeah. nothing. And it was tense game too, tense quarter final. Like and probably Moval would have been 
like a good a lot of people would have fancied them going oh, there yeah, because they were showing, showing good that. form yeah, and, yeah. and and Oras hadn't shown a lot of form so they had but listen it's a tough old place to go down down there to, mm. to, um, down in any showing as well so um, it's going to be a cracker of a game too going in now to the semi final like and Mo will be hoping suppose that Kieran Dover that he's able to start the next day because they're going to need him in the semi final. Yeah. Those results leave this situation. Uh, Convoy against Letter Kenny Gales in one semi final and Downies against Moville in the other. I was talking to Frankie Doherty uh, a short time ago. Uh, what we understand, this is to be confirmed by the way, I just want to emphasise that. Convoy against Letter Kenny Gales will be in O'Donnell Park on Sunday. That's the most likely venue for that, a time to be decided. The Downies Moville game will more than likely be on Saturday at the request of Moville. They have uh, students come back to college on Sunday, so that uh, request has been granted. So that game will be on Saturday at a venue to be decided. Two cracking semi finals Convoy, Letter Kenny Gales, Downies against Moville, as we say, could go anyway. Intermediate Championship. A Rua 210, Neve Colombo 112, Boncrana 14 points, Clahanili 113, John. A point between one of them, one, between one of the games, and a two points between the other. Just as you said, Mayor, alluded to earlier on, the Intermediate Championship, it shouldn't surprise us. No, it shouldn't surprise us, Charlie, and, uh, you know, I suppose from the, them results at the weekend, was, you know, A Rua showing great fight to come back from six points down and five points down when they had got it back to a point. So, you know, I suppose. Uh, Neve Columba probably be kicking themselves, Charlie, to be that far ahead and trying to see the game out and getting caught later on by Bally Shannon and bring that to extra time. So, you know, nothing between them teams and I would say Bally Shannon are delighted, Charlie, to be you know, to be back in a final after, you know, been looking looking to go out of it there when you're six points down in a championship yeah. game in the second half and being five points down then after bringing it back to a point, you know, you thought your chance was gone. But fair play them, they got it to extra time, they got the job done in extra time just by a point. And I suppose on the other other game Maybe a wee bit surprised that Bunkrana ran Clock and so close, but you know, Bunkrana, we've always said, have good forwards with Jigger O'Connor and Keith McGonigal, John Campbell, Owen Doherty. We've chatted about them all year, and I suppose uh, John Fitzgerald was missing for Clock and probably yeah. their best forward, so that maybe evened it up a wee bit and it was gonna, always going to be a harder game for Clock and So, I'm sure Charlie, semi finals are for one, and so I'm sure Clock and aren't a bit worried how they got through there. You know, they're in the final now, and that's where they want to be. So. Looking forward to a big final between them and Bally Shannon. Absolutely, and they met uh, in the semi-final last year, Alan. That went to a replay. First game played in terrible conditions right, up yeah. in Glenfinn, wasn't it? Then they came back to Convoy uh, for, the, for the replay uh, that evening. But just looking at that game, as John alluded to, I was at that game in Killy Beggs yesterday. 7-1 to Neve Columba at half-time, playing with the wind coming yeah. from Kilkear side. Didn't six points didn't look you know a huge lead and then the teams exchanged six points then yeah, in, in the early it stages. Actually, Charlie till three three quarter mark with the six points done. Ah, yeah, you know, they yeah. were getting there. Bally Shannon um, came back to a point then at one stage and then right. Neve Columbo went out to five points. I thought it was over at that stage. Yeah, well Neve Columbo were stung badly last year by St Nalls. I think they were nine That's points right. in I think the quarter final last year and then St Nalls went all the way. So I'm sure that's probably rankled them over the winter. Um, as you said, like we, six, you thought at half time might be enough with them going to be facing the wind in Aru with the second half. But the fact they got them to the three quarter mark, mm. you know, and then as you said, with five minutes to go, then what was it? They were five up. They were five up. Then they, they got a goal. They got a goal to go four, and then they got the next point. Paddy Byrne kicked a very good uh, free yeah. to put them five up. And I mean, any of us who were there thought, well, that's it, you know. Uh, Bally Shannon had done brilliantly to get back to one and then conceded 1-1 one, one to go five down. You thought it's over. Now, the wind was very, very strong, but you knew at that stage it was going to take a goal. And Philip Patton, who'd been taken off and brought on again, scored an absolute yeah, cracker. The week before, I saw Eru against Evora and conditions were very awkward that day. And Philip Patton is, you know, accurate at the best of times. Yeah. Uh, what, even that day he was the one player who seemed to really kind of you know have mastered the conditions at Valentini Park that day so to get someone to come back on and bring the game to extra time um, and then I suppose anything good really happened then Charlie so it ended up with what three points only scored in the extra time with That's three all. sevens off then yeah, so. yeah. but um, yeah like a big victory I think like we've kind of been saying all year we think Arua and Clough are probably the best two teams at this level um, they proved it now uh, I was at the other game. I thought the thing that impressed me about Clonmel was they didn't really want to get into kind of a shootout with Bunkrana. Mm. Um, their defensive game was very sound. Jigger had scored hat tricks in the previous two games. He rarely got a sniff. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and they kind did of, they put was, Kieran McGeady on him, which was an interesting selection. Yeah, they had Kieran McGeady because well, he's quite a fast defender, and then they would also drop back in uh, like a sweeper on occasion as well. So. Yeah. The game never really totally caught fire, and the fact that they had an early penalty from Darren McGeever meant they were always ahead, two, three, four, five kind of thing. But as I said, I think they just they kind of played a little bit with a handbrake on just to knock it into this kind of shootout with Bunkrana. For a team who scored so many goals, like Bunkrana, Gary didn't really get yeah, a yeah. goal chance to be in the game. Not, like no, that one. No. So that was impressive from Claudia. Yeah. Gary, just deal, deal with the Kelly Bates game first. I mean, if you're Neve Columba, you had the experience last year that the boys have alluded to against St. Nauls. And I think that was in Kelly Bates as well, that game, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Last year in Fintra. And, you know, they, they managed the game very Sorry, well yeah. after Neve Colum- after Arua came back at them. To go five up and then to lose an extra time, question marks? Oh, huge question marks. Like, it's the big questions. Feel, I was speaking to a few Neve Columba people yesterday, so I was, and they were saying, like, they just failed to deliver, so they did, and they're really really disappointed two years running now when it's come to the to, to the death you know it's it, it's they, they, like you know they've so many wides sort of things 11 wides yesterday like and they said there were seven or eight of them were so scorable yeah. you know so yeah. so, so, so like, now, the one was tricky in fairness the yeah. one for free tickers and such like it was yeah but, but that was like talking to people uh, at the game and Neve Columba people and they, they were really disappointed with, with the shooting and, and the forward line so it was they said that it let them down the back phone they were really worried at half time they thought it wasn't enough the, the five six points that they were up at half time and, yeah. and, and granted it was a hurricane and listen I feel for the likes of Parigadon, who's put huge work on there. It's just the the, the the players just didn't deliver for him on on the day. Mm. Goals are so important now in games, and you know, uh, A. Rua got the two goals in the second half that they really they got them when they needed them most type of thing. Yeah. Now I have to say, Neve Columbus' goal, Aaron Doherty played an incredible pass, and in to uh, was it Ryan Cunningham? I think got the goal, but the Ryan pass Gillespie. was was on blue, and you thought that's it, that's it. But Bally Shannon. Back to came with a second goal. Well, even uh, the first half, even though they were seven one down, they seemed to have the two better goal chances to probably run the ball. Yeah, so um, yeah. it's funny. Like, like maybe Gary can answer this. Like, if if you're there for the the toss, do you go with the wind or do, like what would you use to done? Because like you can see maybe the last day, maybe Neve Colombo took a little while, you know, to find the rhythm with the wind where. We saw the game in Tony a few weeks ago where St. Michael's, kind of, even though they were well down at halftime, yeah. they knew exactly which way the wind was working for them sort of thing. So mm-hmm. like, would you always encourage your captain to go with it or against it or which way? You see, it nearly, it nearly depends on the group of players that, that you have as well. Like like we talked about St. Michael's there. Like if they're down the bridge and you watch them, they won the toss, they always play against it. So, second, so, uh, so they do. Uh, and uh, like, uh, mm. it, to me, it's 6-1, half Like. I've been caught out in games where I played against it sure. about at half time, and the one the one's yeah. gone. Yeah. You know, so like then, then people will argue as well, and take the elements when it's there. You know, and and get ahead. Oh, uh, it's you know, easy, it's, easy, it's always easier to play, Charlie. If you're six points up, <laughs> going to start the second half, it's easier to run and run and tackle and yeah. tackle when you're yeah. when you're up. It's mm. you know, and get a turnover, and you can hold on to possession. Yeah. So you know, I would always like to have an, you know, if I was six points up at half time, yeah. no matter how big the wind was, I think we have a good yeah. chance because it gives you energy when you're ahead, Charlie. It's always a lot Absolutely. easier. And you know, we were making the point at half time. Okay, six points is not a huge lead, but Neath Columba are used to playing against mm, the wind yeah. as well, yeah. and they're, they'll retain uh, possession yeah. and all that sort That's of stuff. Right. Yeah. And they did that well in the early stages of the, the second half. They were still five points ahead with ten minutes to go, yeah. but they fell apart in the last yeah. ten minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, like uh, and from listening to people, Michael Maguire, like the probably the oldest player in the team was a man that was kind of leading the show especially in the first half he, like, he, well. he was the glue mm. that was holding mm. the whole thing together so listen it's time for these young bucks to step up and, gra- and grab mm. it now I mean they've been pushing and pushing intermediate now for years like and I'm, there's plenty of pedigree in that club and I'm yeah. sure the old heads will not be too happy like you know a lot of people including myself thought they would want it this year you know but, but there's pedigree more, in all right? them clubs you know well, like, you, you made the point about A. Rua before yeah. John here no, you know I, and you're right like there's yeah. pedigree in the Lady, a division one team this last week like, I know we're, yeah. we seem to say the same thing every week but it is yeah. that they're the facts like they're good teams with pedigree and they all want to win an intermediate championship mm. to get to senior like to say that none of them teams are the top 16 and Donegal probably it's hard for them to accept but we've said too Charlie, that maybe the bottom four or five teams in the senior championship and them top four or five teams in the intermediate there's not much between them No, you know, no, no. but it's just trying uh, to yeah, get out of intermediate I spoke to Jason McGee and Letter Kenny afterwards and he said he feels it'd be fair if the finalists both got promoted to two teams uh, somebody else just mentioned that as one well up is, it's, yeah. you know, it's, it's difficult and uh, mm. like Aru has been I think 10 years out of the senior bracket now which is a lot yeah. 10, yeah, and then um 
I think they probably needed that, Charlie, because even though they won the favourites, like they weren't particularly impressive against Nivora. Um, they wouldn't have been impressive the last day for 55 minutes or whatever. Mm, so mm. they're probably capable of more, which they did show towards the end of that game and yeah. an extra time. Well, if you take somewhere like Tyrone, Charlie, who have good enough structures now, you know, at club level, it would be the winners of the Intermediate Championship get promoted and the winners of Division 2 will get promoted to Division 1 and the Senior Championship. So even okay. if, you won this, if you won the Intermediate Championship and you don't come in the top two in the league, you will automatically get promoted Would to Division it? 1 and to the Senior Championship. You yeah. know what I mean? So, yeah, fair enough. So there's a bit of that yeah. there. And then, mm. you know, it could be the same two teams that top the table in the league that meet in the final. Fair enough, the two of them will go up. But it gives you, as you say, it gives two going up every year rather than at one team. One team makes it very stagnant yeah. in fairness. It's yeah. one yeah. team up, one team yeah. down. It's hard. Especially you have 16 in the 16. We, yeah. we, we used to have a Donegal like that. Your league position determined your, your, your championship position. Yeah. And mm-hmm. in fairness, you know, me personally, I completely disagreed with it. And the club has actually voted to change it. The championship mm-hmm. and league was completely yeah. separate. That yeah. was voted by the clubs, yeah. not by the yeah. CCC. And, and I... I I, I think it's brilliant the championship separate from league because it takes the pressure off league football as regards county players in yeah. and regards your championship status. I think that's why our championship's so strong at the moment because it's completely separate competition and it's irrelevant to league football. Yeah. yeah. What was your take on Claude and Edie's performance? I really enjoyed the game, so I did. Um, but Crana, uh, like I was really looking forward to see them as well. Like what they've done this year after winning. Uh, Junior t- title last year, going to Hoyt and Ulster final to get to the last four of the intermediate. Like I'm sure at the start of the year, they'd they, they'd been wanting to get and r- retain their status in the intermediate championship. They they have really really good players. I think it's not going to be long before they're going to make that breakthrough and get to a final. So it is because it, I I just think now that's their first year kind of together with that management team and and working as a group and they seem to be well organised and they did good structure and good game plan. So they had um like the Jigger Jigger and John Campbell inside and probably they probably didn't use John Campbell enough inside. Like he, he, I was looking like he had six inches in the full back like and mm-hmm. they had they had one ball in the first. Half. I think it actually bounced off the bar, so was it? But I can't remember too many other balls, Charlie. Although other than that, there been played in high diagonal ball to him. They put big Peter McLaughlin, who thought he had a good game in the middle with Keen McGonagall. They put him in the last ten minutes when they were actually chasing the game, and that was the time they got the most joy when they started put the ball into big Peter. Like he caught one or two marks, and I think he even got a got a score later on as well. So he did. And um, so so listen, I think they'll they'll have learned a lot, and they'll they'll be very 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 happy. And their keeper pulled off two great saves as well. So so he did, but. Looking at Claude Neely, I'm impressed by them. I thought Sean McLafferty in goals, like, you know, um, it was the first time I saw him this year. He was brilliant. He got 100% in his kick out the second half. He's a lovely striker. The ball, he just floats it in. I suppose he has targets, the likes of Jason and that mm. out there. And um, he, Martin Maguire in the middle of the field, I thought was brilliant for him as well. He tried so hard. He was up and down the, the, whole, the whole day. So was, and they did well in the back. Young Noel Sweeney, the number four, he did well. He's picking up Jigger times as well. So he was, I was I was impressed by him. And they've only, they have two minors, I think I heard them say afterwards on, on the team as well. I, I liked the, the, the first quarter. Um, Darren Aaron McGeever, the fellow with the beer, was completely dominating the game the first quarter. I probably went out a bit, but then but came back into it later on. He got the penalty. The penalty was the difference to me the whole way through through mm. through, through the match. Like in the second half, I was actually looking from half time second half to the fiftieth minute. It was point for point. They actually swapped yeah. point for yeah. point the whole way until the fiftieth minute. Paul Sweeney and Kevin Mulhern had two in a row, and that gave. Claude nearly a five point lead and that was probably the swing in the game and Ferris Boncrana replied with two then as well but that was probably me that I thought Kevin Mulhern was brilliant especially later on I was kept, kept waiting for somebody to grab the game by the scruff of the neck there was no one really standing up to grab the game by the scruff of the neck and really wanting to win the game as a player like, there was a good few county players and ex-county players in show like, you know, and, and I was probably looking to one of them and I know I, know, I suppose Kevin has played he played on McGuinness's time in 2012 so he did, or 2011 yeah. in, in that first year I thought later on he got the ball and he drove and drove and drove and punched holes and created frees and, and was, he actually won the penalty in the first yeah. half for them as well. I suppose the big concern is, and we talked about this before, they only won the game by a couple of points. But I don't you think know, they looked yeah. like losing. No, you, I, you know, yeah, like I think they looked in control. Yeah, uh, but why did they not go on to win it by seven or eight then or but, nine But points? maybe they're listening to you. I thought it was a very controlled John, is performance. It's the, the fair point, John, that you know, you got to bury teams. Ah, you got to bury teams. And like we would, we would classify Clahanili as a better team than Bunkrana yeah. and you had a bit more quality. Now, I know I mentioned John Fitzgerald not been there, probably curtailed their, their attacking play a wee bit oh, but yeah. ah, you would expect them Terry, when as you say Guy when they're five points up with maybe seven or eight minutes to go yeah. you think I yeah, killed mm. the game off here don't let Bunkana mm. back into it so was, you chatted about it plenty Terry, that yeah. they keep letting teams back into it they beat Fanet by a goal two late goals they drew with Neve Columba 
They beat Airu by two points. They beat uh, Neve Breed, was it, by, by five points. And uh, Red, Hughes, Red Hughes by four, and they end up. But no, you know, neither, neither both Neil Breed, not, uh, not, neither, not, both Neil Breed and Red Hughes were still in the games, like game. you know. And we keep saying that it hasn't happened. Uh, they're going to be caught some of these days. They're going to be caught that some team's going to hammer in a couple of goals. Now, I always say, Clonely. If you annoy them, you're in trouble. If you go seven or eight well, points, you don't tell you that, Charlie. Anyway, yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> Mark, Mark will have to have a word with you. Don't you? You're just annoying them. Anyway, all every week. Uh, we're not going. We're not going to look at the final. Uh, we're going to do that next week. But I just want to say these two teams did meet in Ballyshannon. Uh, the final score was A Rua three ten, Clonmacnoise three twelve. So does that mean we're going to have a great final? I wonder, Alan. Ah well, then, as long as you're happy with it, that's the main thing. But I <laughs> think there were those players injured on both sides. Like uh, I think John Fisher missed that game today, and oh, he did. Uh, David Dolan went off injured. I think he only came back. As yeah, well. he just so, came in um, yesterday. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if we'll see it that open, but I think I kind of agree with what Gary was saying there. I think they just wanted to keep controlled. I know they were three, four up in the closing stages, but I think they just wanted to keep their shape and not maybe you know leave themselves exposed to a sucker punch. And they'll be well happy, Charlie. Jace McGee is sixty minutes under his belt, yeah, you know, yeah, and, like, plus, and, and, and you could see yesterday he's obviously not going to fall top, but he's sixty minutes under his belt. Two he's weeks. two weeks to the final, so he has. Yeah. I mean, to me yesterday they looked a team who was in control, so they were the whole, the whole way th- throughout the game, you know, like and and. And I, I just liked the way they played ball yesterday. You know, You're not they, giving they, them too they, much they credit had, there, are you? They, they had a wee bit about them. I, I've never seen Claude Lely in control. I'd love to go to a match <laughs> where, the, where they're in well, control. Well, like I, I felt like they were going to yeah, win that game yesterday, that. you know? Yeah. All right, then, that final in two weeks' time. We'll be looking forward to the next week. It'll be interesting to get the boys' view on how it'll go. The Intermediate Championship relegation playoff, uh, Neve Colin Kill versus Neve Ulton. We don't have a date for that. We, we are suggesting it may be played next weekend, but that hasn't been confirmed. Right, we're going to take a break there. When we come back, we'll be moving on to the senior semi finals. I can tell you there's plenty to talk about, plenty of controversy, plenty of different opinions in here, and plenty of different opinions out there as well. We'll be showing you one or two clips as well that may decide you one way or the other was it a goal was it not a goal or whatever rejoin us after this break Get your car free at DMG. It's as simple as one, two, three. One, buy a used car at DMG. Two, like us on Facebook. Three, tag your friends on Facebook. And you're welcome back and thanks to Kelly's at the Mountaintop for their support. Just to remind you again of their 11 euro steak dinners on Saturday and Sunday nights and their award-winning diner. And we congratulate them on being nine years in business and appreciate their support on our podcast. Let's move on to the Senior Championship. There was plenty to talk about. There is plenty to talk about. 
plenty of controversy and some interesting results as well. We're going to start with the relegation playoff game between Milford and Terman. That was played in O'Donnell Park. Francie Freel's team won in by 111 to 8 points. And uh, John, I'll start with you. I wasn't at that game, but by all indications, Terman, the better side, deserved to win it on the day quite easily. Yeah, uh, that's, that was the case, Terry. They went into a 5 Five nil lead early on, and and they never looked back. Uh, I'm, I was surprised, Charlie. You know, now I haven't seen a lot of Milford or Terman this year, but from playing against Milford this last few years and seeing them against St. Unions in Division One games, you know, I always liked them. I thought they were decent. You yeah. know, Danny O'Donnell, they've changed this year back to Sean Paul, but you know, I thought Milford would have more about them. Now I know Terman can be good on their day, and they've that young team and they've some good players. And Enda McCormick was back from the soccer, which is always a big help to them. You know, and Darren McDade, and they've got some nice players in Terman. But I thought it would have been closer than that. Term, I thought it would have been closer. It was over than early that on, John. Over early on, yeah. I, and you know, chatting to a few people that were at it, that you know, the Milford. You know, Sean Paul's two boys, Kane and, and Luke, who have a good time for good players, mm. just didn't get going. And young Chippy Barrett there, another good player, you know, just yeah. didn't seem to... And Dara Black, good players, Charlie. I would just think they're decent players, but didn't seem to perform. So disappointing for Milford, only eight points. And mm. well done to Francie and Terman will be happy to stay up. And, you know, but Milford now are looking, looking down the barrel against Dunno. So, yeah. you know, the pressure's on. Absolutely. Big result for Terman, given what happened during the league campaign. They got some patience in that. And, you know, and, f- and credit to Francie and, and everybody involved in the management team to keep them going, to bring them through, to retain their championship, uh, senior championship status. Been very easy for the toil to have been thrown on now. Yeah, it was like the, the severely demoralising defeats, especially against Neve Connell and um, Wade Kilcarra the first night. They are very young, but the, the guys up top then, the likes of um, James McSharry and Dara and Enda, as uh, John mentioned, they're like they're not in the kind of very young bracket, and you know they're decent mm, forwards. Like and just the last day, like they were just they scored all the points between them, the eleven points. Yeah. Um, as John said, they, they were comfortable eight two at half time. Milford did come back, but Callum McGilligan came on as a sub. Uh, he wasn't, he's been struggling with injury, yeah. yeah but he, yeah. Like, he'd always score frees. He he put up three frees. I went back to about three points at one stage, and you thought, you know, maybe Terminator getting stuck in their shell here. Yeah. But every so often, when they managed to get out, like the weather got really poor, but um, they managed to get themselves Titles ahead. Scores, and then yeah. Ryan McFadden scored a goal pretty much with the last kick, just to completely um, put it to bed. But like Francis spoke afterwards, he says, "Look, we've good underage teams. He says uh, we've got over. We've learned from them big defeats." But there's a lot of work to do. He says, like, he watches games so much and he says, we're nowhere near the strength and condition of other sides. So that's what they probably want to implement now Yeah. in the next few years because um, they had players involved in a minor final, northern final, last Wednesday night. They do have a good crop coming. The future will be bright, but he just feels that's the next step now they need to do that. Yeah. So. Gary, I was out in Glen Swally, the, the final league games that day that you know we decided who was going to be in the bottom four and who was going to be safe and I've seen how much it meant to Glen Swilly to avoid getting into these playoffs just by the skin of their teeth how big a deal is it for Terman now to retain their senior status for next year and not be looking down the barrel of a gun now in a, in a final playoff maybe to go back to intermediate oh, well you definitely don't want to go down no, no, Charlie, we, we were just talking about the intermediate there like the top three teams probably an intermediate are everybody as good as, as, a, as the bottom four teams in senior if not f- five teams even um, so I, I think it's far better for for Terman to stay in the senior people have said to me oh they'd be better going down rebuilding I says a bloody minefield down there I mm-hmm. says there's no guarantee you'll come back up I says and the next thing you mightn't come up after a year or two and boys get fed up when you're not playing senior football yes. maybe walk away and give up because Terman always have the problem with Kel McCrenn there the soccer's always uh, annoying them so it is and they're always losing one or two boys for big games now, every now and again and, and you can imagine that would even be more more of a problem should, yeah. they, should they go down yeah. to yeah. intermediate so yeah, it for would. sure yeah so it's well done to Francie and, and his team Milford done low now John I have to play in, in a, a do or die situation I mean, Donegal's a club with a huge tradition in Donegal. I know they haven't been overly successful at senior level in recent years. And Milford are a common team because they got to quarter, wasn't they a quarter final last yeah, year, yeah, you know, and they won the intermediate yeah. a year or two ago. So one of them's come back down to intermediate football. Yeah, yeah. And uh, it's hard to know on form, Charlie. I suppose that's their fifth defeat now in a row for both teams. You know, I suppose Milford got one draw against. Oh, oh Milford got one draw. Okay, that's right, yeah. so you know. We spoke about Dunlow, Terry. You went through the stats last week. They haven't lost any of their games by too much. That's right. Maybe two and three and four points, yeah. and they've been competitive. Mm-hmm. But there was always a team at their level. Yes. Milford have taken That's a uh, Milford yeah. have taken a couple of uh, big beatings. So I don't know, Terry. It's going to be hard to call. Uh, possibly Dunlow. Possibly Dunlow. But Terry, I don't know. You know, 
Mm. It, it's do or die. It, it maybe who's going into ch- charity with the most confidence? That's, I know that's the next question I'm going to yeah, ask. Yeah, how yeah. can you have confidence when yeah. you keep getting beat every week? Mm. But it's who can just regroup and who can get them together and say, "Listen, boys, this is the last hurrah. We we need one more big performance." And who yeah. who is able to deliver that big performance? You know, some of them, like as I said, the two bars are big players for for Mulford and good mm. players. Uh, don't know some good players too. You mm. know, can they get big performances out of their big players? Mark Cornyn, a few of them boys. You know. Yeah few more experience. Because Gary, at the end of the day, as John says, it comes down to the players' mentality. The managers can say what they want and do what they want. On the day now when this game takes place between Dunlow and Milford, it's really down to both sets of players to decide we want to stay in senior football or or we don't. We don't care. Yeah, it's like, it kind of goes back to the point of on about Terminator. Yeah. I would worry for whoever goes down. I really would. Mm. Because mm. I can't see them coming back any time in the next two or three years if I let them go down. Whereas I think maybe if they stay in the senior championship, I think it, the, 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 they'll be all right in the next two or three years. You, you know what I mean? Like um, The margins so, are so thin there. Yeah, Cal uh, yeah. McGettigan came on, I think, for Mulford at the weekend. Yeah. So they'll be very, very happy now. I think, I think it's going to be two weeks, Charlie, is it before this I game? I think it looks as if it's going to be two uh, weeks, they're, yeah. They're mm. going to be very happy that he has two weeks and he's got a wee bit of game time under his belt because like he uh, like if you look through the stats like he, he contributes massively on the scoreboard yeah. from freeze See, I, I saw Mulford against St Michael's and Mulford and that game was there for the one and Colin <sighs> Atney and Christie grabbed a bit of scruff of the neck very late on and I've seen Mulford against what you'd consider to be good sides like yeah, yeah, compete yeah. very very well yeah. I'm surprised that they find themselves in this situation yeah. uh, but they, again I mean Terman got the raw end of the stick in the draw the day they played Bundorn you could say a team st- still top considered five, a very tough. top five team yeah. they give them a run for it that day you <coughs> they did uh, yeah. they did surely, you know and you know, I I'm nearly leaning towards Milford. I think Milford will have enough to stay up. You know, be- mm. because they, they've had those battles this year. Like you talked about, some Michael's there. From I was not that game, but people said like, you know, they could oh, have yeah. won that game. Yeah, they should have won. From, yeah. from a Delo point of view, Charlie, you just looking off the field, like they had a massive success with their draw this year. Yeah, you know, they sold yeah. a lot of tickets. Tony Boyle and Sean Sharkey and the Sweeney. You know, mm. around I was chatting with them around the north and around the county. You know, and yeah. that's the people off the field putting a big push in to get a like new field and uh, raise maybe three hundred thousand. Mm. And then you're looking at your senior team hanging on, and yeah. you know, it can be See, the, the two, the two the green lads are in Australia and Adam Neely's yeah. in Australia. That's uh, three big, forward. Yeah. Like, that's three, them, forwards. Three, three forwards, forwards. Yeah. three good forwards so it's a what do you think Alan who would you go for uh, I think it edge towards Dunlow because even though they've been in the mix in five games and lost the five I think it's just that close even they are drag game they started bad Charlie and if they had a few more minutes that night they might have scraped something from it mm. so uh, I just think on Saturday it was just a horrible day it was lashing rain the, you see the teams coming in with no changing rooms they had to throw their bags up behind the stand yeah and if you had to be on it from the first minute if you wanted and Terman were on it and Milford just I think the heads just dropped right yeah. quite early in the game final point on it uh, uh, well, well, yeah, right. well, it's kind of related but it's funny something I missed this weekend Charlie it was no Friday night game and from talking to a lot of our, our public um, they, they loved that Friday night game it's the first yeah. weekend since the championship started we That's hadn't right. had a Friday, Friday well, night game well I was at a Friday game. night game down in Bondorn between four masters and right. Leif Connell Minor divisional yes, final. Yes, but, but I'm on about adult championship, you know, oh, yeah, junior, yeah. junior. Or, or, no, I don't know if I could have rang you and said, come on, Gary, go to Bondo. <laughs> no, but, no, but, no, but people are saying, no, to be able to stream. Ah, absolutely. You, you know, like, know. and hopefully yeah, yeah. now, this is, because there's a huge appetite for it. Well, I think it's for, going to be Saturday for, and Sunday. For, 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 no. Unless they, for, unless they do Maybe a relegation, relegation game or, possibly, or something, because they had one of the relegation semi finals already on the Friday night. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Just one point, you just on about the, like, you know, the lower teams and the senior and the higher teams. Like, like, Bondoran came fifth. In the senior group, yeah, Aru came fourth in the intermediate group. Mm. There's not a massive difference between them. Like St. Nalls came ninth, and Aru came fourth. Yeah, if they played tomorrow, would St. Nalls definitely beat them? You probably couldn't say. Couldn't they could. say for, so you couldn't sure. say for sure. That proves no. that how many teams are off. Right. That similar standard, yeah. Exactly. All right, let's move on to the senior semi-finals now. The first of them was in uh, O'Donnell Park on Saturday evening. Alan mentioned, alluded to it earlier on. Conditions. Terrible overhead. The pitch, John, I have to say, a lot of compliments about yeah. O'Donnell Park. Fantastic condition. and But very difficult for both sets of players. Uh, but Kilcar, sides were level at half time. 1-3 to Gidor, 6 points to Kilcar. Kilcar was still the better team in the first half. The goal kept Gidor in touch. Second half, John, Kilcar really managed the game very well. And we talk about that, managing the game. It was level at half time, so it was all to do in the second half. They won the second half eight three yeah. comfortably eight three. Ah, I think. Charlie, they were very good, very impressed with them. Like, and I know last week here uh, I tipped Kilcar, and then before the match I put a tweet out that with the conditions and seeing that Oren McNeilis was playing and Michael Carroll in the wet day, I thought this was going to suit Gidor more. Yeah. You know, so I tipped Gidor, but 
Uh, not Cherry Kilkow were by far the better team. You know, very, very polished performance, very composed. Uh, got off to a good start. Then Gidor hit them with a goal. You know, mm. you know, brought mm. Gidor back into a bit of life. But Kilkow responded every time. Charlie and you know Ray McHugh man the match without a doubt. For two me. great points in the oh, first Charlie, half. Brilliant, brilliant. You know, and 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 got a vital free at the start of the second half. You know, every time he got the ball, he just made something happen and shown leadership. Charlie, that's what you want from your county man. And uh, for me, he he was immense. Paddy was quiet enough in the first half. Neil McGee was doing a good job, but you know, as the game wore on, Paddy came into it and kicked a couple of magic nice points. But overall, Charlie Kilcar were very impressive. You know, the way they worked the ball, and you know, I was down on the line, Charlie, just you know, in the tunnel area, and you could hear John John Mack was going <laughs> up and down like a lunatic. But you know, he's so much passion for Kilcar. Yeah. But the, their tactic was clog up the middle. They were all getting mm, back in mm. the middle, just clog up the middle. And Gidor, no real answer for Charlie. Gidor kept coming down the middle, and yeah. they would dispossess him and turn them over. And then once Kilcar got that got that turnover, they got the speed merchants. They got speed merchants, yeah. and they had enough composure to work their scores, get their frees, whatever needed. And, and you know they were comfortable winners. So uh, Kilcar, very impressive for me, Charlie. Yeah. Question mark Gidor, uh, Gary Orn McNeilis. I mean, you'd, you'd pick them. A hundred times out of a hundred, didn't look fit to me. No, didn't no, look fit to no, me yeah, at all. You know, yeah, and I, uh, I was watching. Yeah. He was kicking a lot of ball off his right yeah. foot as well. He didn't like want it, to kick with uh, the left foot. No, no. And Michael Carroll had missed the game the week before. You know, you're throwing guys into a really hotbed of a situation. Uh, I don't care pit. how good the players they are. <laughs> you know, it's yeah. very, very difficult. Did, uh, they, did they get the team selection wrong? Kevin Cassidy left out. What's going on there? Well, to me, the big call is Ethan Harkin being left out. Um, I thought he was brilliant. Um, I know I was shocked that he was. He was brilliant that day against McCool. He was their best forward. He was pulled off. They had to bring him back on then. He wasn't happy when he was being taken off, apparently. And uh, he came back on then to put the, the uh, equaliser over the bar and then went on mm-hmm. to win it. And like, I was kind of shocked that he wasn't there because he, he's, he's a good ball carrier. He's a very accurate free taker, so he is well. Like, and they didn't put him on, Hammond Cassidy, until the, till the 45th minute. So they did. And, um, they were chasing everything. They were chasing yeah. the game yeah. at that yeah. stage. Like, yeah, it, it was almost too too late like yeah. and I like the fact that they had uh, Eamon McGee and Orr McNeil inside for a, for a lot of the first half but Charlie one ball I think they kicked yeah. in I mm. mean St Michael's showed the week before uh, I mean if they, I don't know maybe they didn't watch it um, yeah. the amount of time that they had the ball in and look at the joy they got mm. like, like the ball went through I think it maybe came off the crossbar one time um, yeah. but they didn't use it they had fu- so much physical Stature over Kilcar, and as John said, a wet evening. Well, they didn't show that physical stature what whatsoever. Like I, I was really dis. I thought Guido first half showed far more fight, far more grit than they showed against McCool's. So they did, but it seemed to die, and it kind of dwindled out of them. Like there's just three points the second half, like you know, in a championship match, and and you fighting for your lives, like you know, like one point in the last quarter. I mean, like yeah. chasing it. Like did they chase it? They didn't. Mm. Alan, we've been talking about Gidor's performances yeah. basically near, nearly every every week and saying, OK, they're winning games and they won a few comfortably, but they're not performing brilliantly. And you spoke to, was it Daryl Whale after the St. Nalls game? Yeah, and he, right. he more or less said that we need to improve. They didn't. They didn't improve. No, I don't think they have. And I think they're always going to get caught there. McCool's almost caught them the week mm-hmm. before, but for probably cuteness, got them through on the day there. Mm-hmm. Um, they're kind of just were reliant on players a lot this year and a lot of the players didn't reach probably the heights they did two years ago I thought Dara actually had a decent championship um, the likes of Niall Freely and Harkin done well but probably just not enough of them mm-hmm. um, I just thought the last day when you saw Eamon inside Oren wasn't really fit Michael Carroll was back in um, no Ethan Harkin I thought they're just trying their luck here you know hoping yeah. it's going to work sort of yeah. thing because even at one stage the ball broke to him in front of the post and he decided not even to have a go then mm-hmm. mind you he put a great pass in to brilliant, brilliant pass, pass for the goal yeah. Yeah. Brilliant but pass I think the goal. the goal put a slight didn't put a no know, no put, put a shine put a shine in yeah. the half time oh, score yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. I think if yeah. the weather was better Kilcar probably would have won mm-hmm. that game a lot more comfortable like it's probably time of changing we do now I suppose yeah. like they don't owe anybody anything like they've gone mm-hmm. further than anybody else yeah has Aye. those players oh nobody nothing but uh, I do think they've kind of come back again and Marvin more or less quit after the game yeah, you know we yeah, spoke yeah. to Damon on Radio Nagel like this so um, changes will be afoot there I'd say Gidor 
did they learn, sorry, Kilcar, did they learn from the game against St. Eunan's where they had a six or seven point lead at a stage and let, let that go in the O'Donnell Park? And did they learn from the week before? I said to, to Ryan in an interview after the game, maybe the kick up the backside against St. Michael's did them no harm. And he, he agreed. He said, yeah, we thought a lot about that, what we were doing, that sort of thing. So did those two things, were they a big help to Kilcar back to O'Donnell Park, which is a pitch that suits them or should suit them the way they play? And that kick up the backside. I know Gidor got it against McCool's, but Kilcarry got a big scare down in Tony. Yeah, listen, I, the second half, I thought it's as good as I saw Kil, Kilcarry play this year. I just thought the way they played with the ball in such difficult conditions. I mean, the first half, they, they were hugely frustrated. I mean, I marked down my own, own notes. Gidor's first three scores came from th- three times Kilcarry gave the ball away in turnover, so yeah, they did. Yeah. And, and I could see that frustration among them. I could see the frustration coming from the sideline as well. But the second half, Charlie, they were nearly like the Barcelona of the GA. So mm-hmm. the way they played the ball and kept it in tough, difficult conditions. Like, they put the, uh, uh, Andy McLean, who I hugely admire, they put him back on uh, on uh, Kane Mulligan. Uh, I could see what they were doing and then I was like, I was nearly a bit worried. I was like, this is going to take away from their attacking threat here now. It did to an, ex- to an extent, but he probably, he, he won that battle with Kane Mulligan. Was yeah, level. Kane Mulligan was struggling with injury, I think. Right, yeah, right. Yeah. right. It was probably le- level enough at half time, but I thought Andrew definitely pulled away in the second half on it um, but I, I would like to see him further up the field like when they play, play him further up the field I just think he brings so much to the table I, th- mm-hmm. I thought R- Ryan at centre back like the three scores he got like I couldn't understand Charlie Guido didn't pick him up whatsoever mm-hmm. he, did he kick two into the goalkeeper's hands in a row? I, 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 I into right the river into yeah. 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 the river yeah. end yeah. Yeah. so yeah. That, uh, like Charlie but I couldn't understand like, you know, uh, to go out and leave a player Ryan McHugh's stature unmarked throughout the game he, mu- he must have thought I'll he won the what, battle Gary, he's hard so to pick he up if you Watch yeah. him. Yeah. He, he's hard to pick up because he'd keep you out of the game. Yeah. He'd, yeah. You know, oh, oh you listen, know. he is. He'd keep I, you out of the game. And I thought Mark and the sweeping job, like yeah. maybe that's why Guidori didn't kick so much in because he cut out a couple of ball mm. in, in fairness, so he did. I think Owen McHugh's getting stronger and stronger like, like you know woof the hamstring I thought he, he tweaked it one time I was watching him he, he kind of went down and kind of held it but he must have been alright That and two weeks another 60 minutes under the belt's going to help him more scores from play for him as well now the first the first what we did really well they did better than anyone else they really hurt Kilcar in their own kick out so they did like we pressed really good yeah. So yeah, there was one stage really, in the really first half, Terry, maybe after 10 minutes, where one of the Kilcar boys, maybe number 13, he was up on his own on the 45, and the whole Gidor team had pushed up. That's right. He was, that's no, he right. was thinking, I was sure, what's going to happen here? Yeah, Kilcar, yeah. get it. But Gidor yeah, yeah. were gambling well, you know. Uh, but uh, They actually took uh, like about 50% of the kickers. Yeah, and yeah. I, I, I missed one or two, but uh, going by my figures, I would say Gidor took 50% of Kilcar's kickers. And I and I was giving Kevin Campbell huge, huge praise, you know, but they're going to they're gonna have to come up with someone different yeah. the next day. But Terry, they're. they're Kilcarry are seriously well conditioned. The fitness to yeah, run back yeah, and clog yeah. up that medal, and then once they turn over, they yeah. the S&C coaches they can they can, can go, go yeah. they can go they can speed. go and they can yeah. hold on the ball as well. But for me, Charlie, sorry now, to, you know we're going mm-hmm. on about Gidor, but Or McNeilis not being around the midfield for them just mm-hmm. seemed to be a massive void for them. You know, yeah. even with long kickouts and when he gets it, he can give a good pass in and that. And he just, wasn't fit. No, job. and they didn't really. Michael Carroll started well, but he tired very quickly, and yeah. they just didn't seem to have any energy. End, at end all. of an era for this Gidor team as we know it now. Uh, I mean, fantastic champions uh, a couple of years ago up to Ulster, champions fantastic and got to the final and could have won any of the three finals last year uh, against Glen. These three magnificent games, but this year it's gone down another notch. Is this is this the end of as as we know it now? Probably off the current route, the way it is now. I think mm-hmm. all year they were, have been a bit like the 2017 version. That was the year they were beating Neve Connell comfortably in the semi final and right. unravelled. Do you remember Neve Connell ended up getting through to play Yeah. Car? Yeah. Um, no more than John, a guy thought when I saw the rain on Saturday. Um, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to mention the 2016 final where that morning Dan Swilly looked out the window and saw the yeah, grey skies. Yeah, doing rain dances that it. morning. <laughs> but I think that it shows the kind of way Kilcar have matured as yeah. a side. Like um, you know, people four years on now. They might be fancy on. that yeah. they were a very controlled performance. They played a different sort of game. They were very you know, possession based, but they weren't, you know, blitzing mad. No. Holding their shape, as you said, keeping the middle. When they needed when they got covered. the chance to break the line, they broke the yeah, line. But I just yeah. uh, not as dynamic probably as usual, but no. more yeah. uh, control. Yeah. control. Yeah. Yeah. And I think yeah. that's another yeah. strength to their bow. Yeah. Um and I suppose the last time they actually played a game kinda like that was 
when they played against Neve Connell in the final that finished 7-4 mm. when they won 2000, that's 2017 17, as well yeah, yeah. yeah. so um, mm. and you know they can, they can mix it a bit more than they used to be able to yeah. uh, alright yeah, go on Gary the, last point on it I, I think it's definitely like you're asking about changes like there's definitely going to be changes I think you're going to see some of the elder boys move on now mm. from Gidor and Alan said Mervyn already said he's more or less more gone, gone so, yeah. so like are you looking to the likes of some of the backroom team members to step up I, mean, I know Stephen Casty came in this year and yeah. he seems to have huge hunger and huge passion for for the club so yeah, maybe you're looking at him to step up now job. Yeah. Yeah. alright we're going to take another short break here uh, on our podcast thanks to Kelly Centra for their support just to remind you of their 11 Euro steak dinners on Saturday and Sunday evenings and uh, they're celebrating nine years in business. We really appreciate their support. When we come back, we'll be looking at the second of the semi-finals, the reigning champions, Neve Connell, taking on St. Unans. Get your car free at DMG. It's as simple as one, two, three. One, buy a used car at DMG. Two, like us on Facebook. Three, tag your friends on Facebook. And you're welcome back once again. Well, we've dealt with the junior championship matches. We've dealt with the intermediate. We've dealt with the first of the senior semi-final and the relegation playoff. The big game for a lot of people was the reigning champions, Neve Connell against uh, St. Eunans, who they beat in the semi-final last year. Could St. Eunans turn that result around? Or would Neve Connell get to their fourth final in a row and keep up this remarkable run in the championship? Well, it finished. Neve Connell won 10, St. Eunans 12 points. But that's only half the story. That was after extra time. There was so much jammed into it. I'm not sure we have time to jam it all in here, John Harn. Take off your chairman's hat there just for a second. And uh, you said your heart says St. Eunans, your head said uh, Neve Connell last week. Your head got it right, but your heart must have been thumping yesterday. Oh, Terry, it was. Um, I still haven't got over it, Terry. I'm sick. You know, I thought you'd never be as disappointed as when you're playing, but I tell you, as a supporter, Terry, it, it's, it's hard to take. Uh, oh, Terry, just second, you know, just so disappointed for the boys. But listen, they gave it everything, Charlie. Uh, when you were three, listen, when we were two points down going into injury time, I thought, no, it's all over. Six, eight, six, six down. Yeah. Nile put over the, the equaliser, brilliant free kick. I thought we have the momentum now, and that's the way it worked out. And we started well, and Young McGeehan was brilliant inside, and Sean McVeigh and our subs were doing well, and we went two points up. And then half time came, and then we got the first point, Charity, of uh, the second period of extra time to go three up. And listen, you thought there's no way back for Gandhi's here, bar a goal, and they didn't really look like getting the goal. And then they got the controversial goal, Charity, and it's just, listen, uh, you don't want to be bitter about it, Charlie, but, you know, probably nine times out of ten, as Peter Campbell said, I think Martin Regan said it too, they got the rub of the green, nine times out of ten, you would say it was a free out. 
listen, tell you the decision went against us. Our boys would be very aggrieved at the Rory Cavan the point. They are adamant that that was a point. There's yeah. no doubt about it. You know, Seamus said he consulted Enda, the linesman, uh, and Enda said it wasn't a point. And then our boys in the line said they were chatting to Enda, and Enda said he didn't see it. So, you know, there's a bit of confusion there. Mm. I know Richie Thornton, the St. Junior's manager, was a bit... Uh, he, 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 he was a bit annoyed, Alan. A bit annoyed, uh, he was, yeah. It was like it was like awakening over there. Uh, so it was just complete and utter dejection and silence. Uh, Richard Thornton wasn't happy. The main crux, I think, was the, the Rory Cavanaugh one more so than even the goal. The goal, I think, the goal took more time to kind of sit in when people got home and maybe caught up on it and saw it on their phones or whatever. Uh, even then, I went over to the Neve Connell camp and they were stunned as well. <coughs> Uh, like they were go- well, what did you think what did you think and like, everyone was kind of of the same opinion it was, it was just weird like I remember being in the Stade de France when Thierry Henry handled the ball and the French people were nearly like the Neve Connell people like they were like <laughs> we, we won but there was no like back pattern or anything no, or whatever no, but, no. and like they everybody's opinion was as good as the others you know what I mean I was mm-hmm. chatting to Martin Regan and Martin, Marty Boyle afterwards um, and even Martin Regan you know he was very sympathetic towards the way it ended uh, for St. Unions because it, it, it was a very weird atmosphere, especially with, suppose, with no supporters and the subs are dotted up in the stand yeah, and just uh, complete dejection. Now they're very disappointing. Gary, we're going to talk more about those controversial moments, but uh, could I put this to you? Neve Connell were down to 14 men. AJ was sent off after about 15 minutes. So St. Unions played against 14 men for three quarters of normal time and didn't win the game. Yeah. As John said, they got the momentum going into injury time, or sorry, extra time, went three points up and still didn't win the game. So is it is that their own fault? I mean, we'll talk about the controversial things in a minute, but those factors, should they have won the game without any controversy whatsoever? Well, well like I, I tipped, tipped last week them to win it an extra time, so it did, like, you know, I, I said it'd be a draw after normal time, and I th- yeah. think they would have enough an extra time to go on and win it, and I remember John looked up at me in the press box when they were th- when they were three up, and he gave me the thumbs up. And, and <laughs> I didn't give you a thumbs up, but I thought... <laughs> <laughs> I thought He's got something this, right. This, this is looking good. It, yeah. it looked good, and I, and I agreed with him, you know, yeah. I, cu- I couldn't see a way back, but to, to kind of answer your question, you know, Unions came out at half-time, AJ could send off just before half-time, they had half time to sort what are they going to do with the extra man mm. like you're on about to, that were they going to go and win the game but was the safe thing I mean Unions I think were nearly like, Kilka- like the way they played Kilcar they played it safe they nearly went down playing we're not going to lose this game mm. as opposed to going to going to win the game Yeah. Like, I know the majority of teams will play play with a, a sweeper and that's what they did with the extra man so they did and and Peter Devine, who's had a brilliant championship, he was a free man, so, so he was. But probably if you wanted to, to, to win the game, I mean, you're probably looking at a more attacking option to play maybe in the round the middle third, you know, yeah. because the Union's defenders are brilliant and probably on paper uh, the, up there with uh, the best in the, in the county and club defenders. Um, like 12 points, Charlie, over 90 minutes of football. Like it's mm. not enough, like to 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 win a game probably. E- even though it, it, it was tight, I'm sure when they look back at they're not going to be happy with twelve points over ninety S- minutes. S- of sometimes football. the opposition, you know, makes you play a certain way. Mm-hmm. But I agree with you, Gary. You, you have you have two choices to make here. Yeah, you can try and the try and win the game, being careful yeah. and end up losing it. Yeah, or you can go I, for I, it. I think that's what and, happened. And lose it then anyway. Yeah, so I, what, I, what I, you know, which is the which is the lesser of two evils? Yeah. I, and, and like there were so many like Pori getting was was fall forward and I don't think the use has strength at all of delivering that diagonal high ball and him like I, I Pori didn't get the opportunity to take a mark at all during the game like um, the, the like Glenty's conceded the kick out so they had primary possession because they were down to 14 men every time so they had mm. given prime possession to go and set up an attack every time. Like, like that's huge. Yeah, yeah. If you're guaranteed but, primary but, but possession. Like, Charlie, when AJ got sent off, like I said, you know, it's not going to be a while. All right, it's, a, it's definitely an advantage. Yeah. No one wants to be down to 14 million. You're better to have but a the man system extra. Means not but the system that, that they yeah. play, it's very mm. hard. They're going to get men back. And Gary, I know what you're saying. We get the uh, short kick it off. But we come up to the halfway line and you've still got 14 still got men. Blue and white blanket you know, there. And there's one yeah. man going to make a difference there when you're keeping one or two back. You know, yeah. all right, it, it should. But you're in a tight place in the scoring areas within, you know, 20 metres of either post, you're not going to score from out the thing and yeah. they clog up the middle. You know, it, it does make it very hard, but that that's no no excuse, Jerry. I'm not saying, but the way Glanty's play, I don't think being down to 14 men, 
you know, because as a mass, no, because of I think them. they were defensive before yeah. AJ was sent them. off. And uh, uh, like, it, like the start, I was surprised how you know much respect they gave St. Julian's. Yeah. It was three one up till about twenty eight minutes, and they were commonly had fifteen behind. Mm. Newtons weren't shy about it either, now, but Newtons were kind of a bit more conventionally shaped. Yeah. Like the, the joke we had was like 2005 and you, Jim McGuinness might be warm up the line here, yeah. jungle lay <laughs> in the middle. But yeah. that, that is the way they played though. Yeah. But they were they were good on the attack. Their attacks, you know, carried menace mm. whenever they did. Their breaks were yeah. good. They have good ball carriers. Um, and, it's a, and they tend to get scores when they attack as well. Yeah. You know, they well, don't especially in the second half, like say in, in the last 15 minutes, like they, a couple of them ran right up the middle of the units. To, no, once mm. a units man slipped or they got past them, the whole thing opened up and they kicked yeah. the uh, Dune and Dory to kick a big and point. And yeah. Brendan McDay. Yeah. Brendan McDay, yeah. you know. Uh, like I thought Connor Donald, Duck Donald, and Sean McVeigh, like their contribution off, well. off the bench was immense. They got a few points and between them. They got two each. Two so each. they did. Connor Donald's where the units would get over and back and over and back and wouldn't know where to go. And he would just have go. Yeah. Like from 40, 50. Yards. Two subs scoring four points there's a lot of like and I would have worked with Connor in the college Charlie and the under twenties like in a player with great time for like and he's always an eye for eye for the post so he has and he's not like, afraid to shoot he's no, confident no, no. where yeah. some of our players are a bit cagey yeah you know. and, and I'll go back to Ewan's first game against Bundoran he started mm. did all right. Started against second game against Kilcar, did all right. Actually picked up Ryan McHugh when yeah. they'd lost lost yeah. the ball, and I thought did all right. And that yeah. came off that game and didn't start a championship game since. Right, so we, so yeah. I I probably thought he he was harsh done by so, so he was because like he showed yesterday coming off the bench. Mm-hmm. I mean that's what you have to do here. Yeah, he put the ball between the posts. They only they only got twelve scores and he yeah. he got two. Like all right, there's two big incidents, Alan. The the Rory Cavan a point. A lot of people saying uh, it was a point that should have been given. Uh, serious question like that. But the big decision, I suppose, of the day was the awarding of the goal. We have a clip. You can talk us through the situation here now. Yeah, um, this at the time when it happened first, I thought instant reaction. I just without really thinking, thought Leo's chance in his arm here. The more I kind of thought about it afterwards, I thought, do you know what? I think Leo hasn't done anything wrong here, and you know the clips then started to go round. Then, yeah. So we tried to dig up a few rules just to be sure. The unusual thing about this, it nearly contravenes two rules. Well, we show the clip first. Yeah, show the clip away okay. now, and we'll talk you through it. So this is the rule in regards to goalkeepers. It says when uh, the goalkeeper, or when within the small rectangle, the goalkeeper may not be charged, but he may be challenged for the ball. In respect of that rule, you think what Leo does is legal. Mm. I believe so. That's, I thought, this grand is a goal. Then, with the debate that's going on, and everybody, there's so many, um, there's a big variance. A lot of opinion, yeah. yeah. Well, I would disagree with that, but anyway. Let me just <laughs> say it out anyway. So, <laughs> then, uh, and I understand what you're yeah. saying too, because some people, maybe it wasn't, because if you look. Yeah. Uh, Go on, read the, the other rule. Yeah, we're not going to reenact it here, so it's yeah. gone. <laughs> but then, the actual tackle rule then, uh, to use a fist on or around the body of an opponent for the purpose of dispossessing him of the ball is a foul. So that's grand. Um, so there was one man who said he used the fist and we're just going to let him play here now. Yeah, well, it wasn't actually a square ball. I came in to obviously tackle hands away. Yeah. I actually popped the ball out before I made contact with him, you know. Yeah. He just had in his hands and he got a fist on it while it was in his hands mm. and it just went in the back of the neck, the neck you know. So, so Liam McAloon in that interview with Frank Cray of the Donegal News says he used the fist. The rule says... Yeah, I think Leo probably wasn't aware of the fist rule. I think Leo yeah. was pretty genuine in his 100% yeah, genuine. And, uh, he was given an honest assessment of yeah, the, of the incident. We're, just, yeah. we're, we're not kind of... No, no, no. For a replay no. here myself and <laughs> no. uh, It's just, it's, it's kind of an unusual situation because I've never really... Well, come Jenny, I wasn't at, I was only one of the four of us here who wasn't at the game. Yeah. And you sent me the clip and I looked at it and my first reaction was, that's a foul. He... You know, he hit Sean Patton before he hit the ball. Yeah. No matter if that tackle takes place out in the forty-five meter line, the whistle goes for a free, and nobody thinks anything of it because I it's think a free. Opposite, no, I think that yeah. happens. The forty-five is not a foul. I think. Yeah, I think he goes for the ball. I think he gets the ball first, which he did say. No, no, he didn't no, get the no, ball no, first. No way. No, no. Charlie, where I'm coming from, I, I don't. I wouldn't be too worried about the fist because a lot of players go on with the fist to tackle the ball, and yeah. that's to yeah. me, I would get that. But my question is that you know. If the goalkeeper has possession of the ball, you cannot charge him in the small rectangle. Mm -hmm. You cannot charge him. You can block down his kick or his pass or his hand pass, but you cannot charge him. To me, Sean Patton has the ball a split second 
Yeah. And Leo, Leo comes in and punches it out of his hand. Punch it or whatever. Now, in saying that, I think if Sean Patton had a held on to the ball and Leo bundled him into the goal mm. with the ball in his hand, I think it would have been a free yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. The yeah. fact yeah. that the ball spilled out and went straight in, mm. you know. But to me, Sean had the ball split second and the rule says you can't you can't mm. tackle the goalkeeper once he has possession. Yeah. You can stand up and block him, block his kick or block his pass. When he's going, but once he has it, you can't charge him. And Neil ran in and charged him. You see, you him. need you need a frame. Right. You need Jerry, a frame by frame, you know John, to decide. Did the Leo hit I Sean? Think it's nearly impossible. To first, nearly impossible. Oh no, Packing had the ball, Charlie. Just, ah, just did, but did he hit Sean first before he got well, the ball? Got the first, ball first. Yeah, and you need frame by frame. Right, yeah. I mean, but he still comes in and ta- challenges the oh, goalkeeper yeah, for yeah. Charlie. Now, Charlie, yeah. if the ball came in high and was dropping, and the two of them went up for it, yeah. and he's you know we've seen that plenty of times. That's fair yeah. enough because he's challenging for possession. Yeah. But to me, Patton has possession for a split second before. Yeah. Now, Gary, Charlie, listen. What do you think? Like my initial reaction was when I watched in the press box, I was like, no, I didn't even like think anything. I just went free out. She's the next thing. <laughs> there was a whole noise mm. that. Was, why? Well, why did you think it was a free out? Was it was a goal? Because I'd never seen it happen before, mm. you know. And then I saw today at lunchtime, so we did a frame by frame one. And when I watched it frame by frame, I went, oh, I can kind of see now why they passed me. Because to me, Leo actually, yes, Sean got the ball first, but Leo got the ball before he had connected with Patton. So we did. did. When I saw frame by frame, yeah, frame yeah, today, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, you know, when I watched it, geez, about 10 or 11 times, so we did, mm. to actually watch it. And so, Charlie, that's us watching it. How have the poor officials a chance? To, you yeah. know, in fairness, the officials, uh, I have huge sympathy for them because it was very, very, very tough to call. Like you know, and I know we're on about the Rory Kavanaugh one as well. The score, like again, like we don't have the benefits of Hawkeye and McCall mm. Parks. Mm. We so we do. Yeah. But, ter- but guy, this one we don't. I, I don't want to come across as very bitter here, but mm. like there's two on players there. You know, t- to me, some of them aren't very experienced, and that's what I'm hearing. Charlie, you know, they're not very experienced at that level. And then there was on that side, and you know. The reaction of the players, the reaction of our subs, the reaction of our bench, that it was definitely over the bar. Now, that was a vital time. It was six yeah. all, Charlie, 52 yeah. minutes. And we had a one point. We we never led yes. until we went to yes. extra time. So it would have been a big, big score oh, in the context of the huge. game. Yeah. You know? well, why the confusion? I mean, where, in relation to the goal frame, where was the ball? It was difficult for us on the press box yeah. side yeah. because Rory had it from the stand. The stand. So you could hear the cheer from the subs, you mm-hmm. see. And then there's a couple of, you know, who are directly behind it. Yeah. At yeah. Michael Ida and everybody yeah. I spoke to on that side now, uh, plus I actually spoke to one or two of the Neve Connell players. They said they think, thought it was over. I think Marty Boyle has said to mm-hmm. someone, they yeah. said to you, Al, yeah, they he was, well, he he was himself, he thought uh, it was over. Thought thought it was over. Um, and the umpire, did the umpires immediately signal it wide? They seemed to, yeah, they wouldn't have seen well, that too much well, confusion. Not immediately, they're a wee bit of, and then they just went wide, you know, not yeah. right away. Um, ah, yeah, mm. But then it, they obviously, Shimas went to end so we did, and he went to the umpires, I think. Mm-hmm. As, as well and and then he, he gets more confusion he, he, he when that happens yeah. Yeah. listen yeah. It's, it's, it's a tough gig I know unions are, are really sore about it and rightfully so and uh, listen but it's tough on the officials but, too but Matt Ch- Regan said then like he says you know nobody's chatting about AJ Gallagher he says he mm-hmm. believes he said like this is right after as well now he didn't yeah. get a chance to review anything but he says he spoke to AJ he just believes he shouldn't have AJ was sent off for allegedly strike. striking. Yeah, so uh, like that, that's something that maybe we're going to look into as well. So, and was that on the was that on the or umpires ward or the referees? Umpires, umpires. Yeah, because yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Seamus went to both on that as well, and he actually when he came out from the umpire, you could see him writing the book hmm. before the card even came out. So you thought yeah. whoever somebody's going to get it here, yeah, and it was AJ. But like they're claiming um, he didn't strike. He didn't strike. Yes, yeah, this so was a group of players involved. Yeah, in one yeah, of yeah, these yeah, 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 yeah. So. Uh, there's a lot of things, you know, a lot of decisions like that as well. And I think, that, like, if you're from Neve Connolly, you're going to say, look, there's more than this point of Rory Cavanaugh's or the non-point. You know, we, we were a man down uh, sure, for, of course, yeah. of course. for a lot of the game. But, right. Uh, you can see we, we, both sides. The result stands. That's the bottom line. Um, St. Eunice have missed a trick again. Uh, credit to Neve Connell boys in this championship, senior championship, and we know how hard it is and one and back-to-backs and all that sort of thing, John. You've been involved in good teams that have... Mm-hmm found it hard to do that and yeah. to continue year after year I mean it's incredible what they've done over the last it number is, of years uh, yeah. but we got the five championship finals in a row Charlie so just <laughs> right to there <laughs> only in four but no Charlie it is very hard it is very hard and they're you know look at the players that, that did it for them yesterday like Brendan McDayer coming off the bench and kicking a great point and I know like Kieran Thompson obviously a big class, loss to them, but when he came yeah. on Charlie was a meant caught a couple of great balls and kicked that winner and like People are on to me about Leo and he hasn't trained and he's only played one game. And I said to a few people last week, I've known Leo, I've known Leo for God, for too long and uh, 
you know, I said, mark my words, Liam McLean will have he'll a big, contribute. he'll do something. Yeah. He'll do, he mightn't do a lot, but he'll yeah. do something that'll have a big influence on the game. Yeah, he he always does, and, and he, he did. did. He did. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, you have to take their hats off them, Jerry. They, they, they're an experienced team, and uh, they got it to the pin of their collar yesterday, and, you know, they came up with the answers. So, you know, you got to take your hats off them. But it's hard for our boys. But just coming back to our boys, Jerry, you know, it's not all doom, doom and gloom. No. Like, if you take, you know, we were beat, they beat us last year by a point. And they bet us this year by a point. But if you look at our team from this year, I think we have five young players that didn't play start that game last year. So we're evolving, Charlie. It's hard for them. You know, it's a sickener for them. It would have been great to get to the final. But uh, I think they have to stick together. They have, they have a lot of good young players coming through. And that game will help them, Charlie. This time next year, whenever the championship comes around, you know, they'll have that heart there. They'll have the experience, you know, of, of going toe-to-toe with Lanthus in another championship game. And someday, Charlie, they're, they're, they're going to, you know, get yeah. into a final. And, and yeah. then, you know, I know, going back, Charlie, and I said before here, like, 95 and 96, when we were starting out, we lost two semi-finals in a row to Neve Colomba. That's right. You know, and, and, yeah. and we were sick, but we were a young team. And then 97, we, we made the breakthrough. So, you know, the lads are going to have to stick together. They're good lads, Charlie, and, and they won't throw the hat in. So, you know, mm, yeah. just have, it's a bit of a small thing. First, like with the Rory Cavanagh, I know they won in yeah. 2001, Rory Cavanagh, Kevin Rafferty, Connell Dunn. Mm, mm. Like they were getting knocked out. I remember even, I was just thinking, I think it was like 2004 against our draw John, was it? Like yeah. Rory Cavanagh had a shot in the last minute, hit the post. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Same, yeah. same post as yesterday. Same, yeah. Came down and you didn't lost by a point and our draw beat McCool's easily in the final. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, like you I have to take even, the pain before you get the game. I think even though if you look through the results last three or four years, like they drew with Kilcar in the park I think four years ago when Ryan scored a late free to draw it, mm-hmm. drew with Kilcar this year, drew with Guidor away last year who were Ulster champions. Mm-hmm. It, they lost when Barry Meehan was in charge to Guidor by a couple of points where yeah. Christopher Sweeney made a good save from Killian Morrison at the end. Yeah. Neve Connell now beating Barry Meehan's team beat them actually 2000. 17 was it and then and a group two game just point defeats yeah, to yeah. Neve Connell so like they're actually inches away yeah but it's just getting that getting just that win against a big team yeah. you know yeah. Yeah. Gary just them. finally on this uh, we've talked about this this was Neve Connell's real first big test in the championship they passed it not with flying colours you'd have to say but is there any significance in that you would expect them to beat everybody they beat up to this and beat them comfortably, and they did exactly that. This was their first big game. Martin Regan alluded to me out in Glen Swally. We, you know, we, we the big, biggest challenges are ahead. Did, what did this tell us about them? Um, like it told us a lot. Like uh, I was, I just think looking back at the three games last year against Guidor, I just think that stood to them yesterday massively. So it did. That's what I thought about right away. It was like. Like they were never beaten in them games. No one was giving them an opportunity in those three games against Guido last year. I mean, like yesterday, the the fence was probably balanced 50 50. Like they went in on the 60th minute and there were seven, seven, eight, seven, six up. So there, Thompson plucked one out of the sky. I thought his fielding was brilliant when he came on. Like I was looking at him time after time. He's like a salmon coming out of water. So he was just leaping up. So he was. He he picked one out of the air in the sixtieth minute. They were up by a point. He gave it to McDyer. He ran down the stand side and and stuck it over for a brilliant score to put them eight six. And you'd have thought we're in injury time now. You know they're, they're home and host here. Yeah. So, so they are. And. Um, you know they started make changes. They brought Owen McGettigan off. Um, they brought someone else off. I can't remember now. Jack was sent off. Jack, Jack was yeah. sent off. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. well. I thought Jack McKelvey was immense yesterday. Yeah, really I thought good. he was brilliant. Like in the sixty minutes, he was my man in the match. So he was mm-hmm. like, I, he had a tough task. Mark and Niall O'Donnell, and and like Niall had a good game, and like and to the composure, Niall had it had at the end to have that free over. Like you know, it, I think he's. I mean, I. I think he's really matured when he sh- mm. showed that ability to hit that over then because the one previous was only it was a, cu- a minute or so before that I missed it and to have the composure again and the bravery to step up again I think it, sh- it shows well for Euron's and for Donegal going forward now but I, I thought Jack was immense he took a fight to Euron's time after time I would say his possessions were through, through the roof he carried the ball religiously I thought the three Doherty's the three brothers Euron in particular late on John touched about the score that he got yeah, late on. Like yeah, his yeah. energy. So it was Alton the Orblower came up from corner back, mm. got a massive score in the fortieth minute, so he did to put to put to put them uh, five three up, so it was. Um and, and then the younger boy Keel in the wing. The, their three boys I think have had had a brilliant championship to date. Um Kieran Thompson, I just thought was the man who got them over over the line when he when, when he came off the bench, so he did his catching. When they were under pressure, Unions did brilliant 
on the kickouts yesterday on Stephen McGrath's kickouts. Do you think I felt they should, could have pushed up more on Stephen's kickouts because mm-hmm. Neil Connor worked on it an awful lot and you didn't really stand him back off them. And I yeah. thought, you know, just see what happens now. Yeah, they them. didn't really mm-hmm. squeeze them, John, no? The, like, uh, like, like well, my figure's not entirely, entirely accurate, but, uh, but you know, I, I think they got 50% of Glenty's kickouts yesterday. Mm-hmm. I, I, you know, which, which, which is massive. Like, we talked about Terman took 40, 48%. Like, yeah. you, I thought Unit did really, really well in the kickout and, and they targeted, obviously, that area, so so they did, but Glenty's like they're just never beaten, so 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 they're not. I thought, I thought in defence when Unions had the ball, it was like boom, two three players straight to the ball right yeah. away. They yeah. didn't give them the opportunity to look for pa- for an easy pass, like or time in the ball, like and you know yourself, oh, John, John, when, John, when mm-hmm. you're in the ball, you want time to look up. Mm-hmm. You don't want boys slapping yeah. you and hounding you and so putting pressure. You shouldn't on be too you. worried then. The fact that they just squeeze through. I think yeah. that I think they'll be happy. I think they'll like be over the moon. Like even you, you know, win the game on his merits. I think yeah. the Irish <laughs> the same as well. Like it wasn't. Okay. Right. Yeah. right. We'll talk more about that next week when we look forward to the final. Uh, that final on uh, Sunday week. The intermediate final we think will be Saturday week. We'll be talking about that next week. And by this time next week, we'll know who the finalists are in the junior final. And we'll be talking about that as well. Just to confirm, by the way, the hurling championships get underway again. Not get underway, but. Uh, semi-finals this weekend here are the fixtures and on Saturday the junior semi-final between Satanta and Dunlow is at 2.30 in O'Donnell Park followed by the senior semi-final between Satanta and Burt so a good double header there on Saturday on Sunday the action switches down to Burt the junior semi-final there is A. Rua against Carndona and the senior semi-final Boncrana against St. Eunans we'll have a a look at them next week as well thanks to the lads for coming in it's been uh, an action-packed uh, programme. I hope you'll agree with that. We'll be back with more, of course, next week as well. Thanks to Kelly's for their support. Don't forget about their special weekend 11 euro steak dinners. Thanks to Tommy here at Full Tilt Studios for again looking after us. Rejoin us next week. Get your car free at DMG. It's as simple as one, two, three. One, buy a used car at DMG. Two, like us on Facebook. Three, tag your friends on Facebook. Donegal Sport Hub Donegal Daily Championship Podcast brought to you in association with Kelly Centra multi award winning store mountaintop letter Kenny providing 24 hour service 7 days a week <laughs>